Good morning, everyone. Our entrance antiphon on this feast of St. Matthew, the Apostle and Evangelist. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, says the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Thank you very much. As you just heard, today is a beautiful feast, a calling of one of the apostles, St. Matthew, calling of a sinner, and uh, so it reminds us that Jesus calls each one of us, in spite of our sins, in spite of our unworthiness, he calls us to follow him, and he sends us to bring his love and goodness into our world. Lord, we thank you for St. Matthew, for his beautiful gospel that teaches us so much about you and your love and goodness. Help us also to follow you and to bring your love to our world. We pray, Lord, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. And because today is a feast, we say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, In the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who with untold mercy were pleased to choose as an apostle St. Matthew the tax collector, grant that, sustained by his example and intercession, we may merit to hold firm in following you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, One God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one Spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all, and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God 
to mature manhood to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The Word of the Lord. Their message goes out through all the earth. Their message goes out through all the earth. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims His handiwork. Day pours out the word today, and night to night imparts knowledge. Their message goes out through all the earth. Not a word nor a discourse whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world their message. Their message goes out through all the earth. Please join me in singing. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. And may the word of God always be on our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. He said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in Matthew's house, many tax collectors, collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. I forgot to welcome in a special way our sixth graders and first graders. Great to have you guys here every Tuesday. Thank you so much to your teachers for bringing these uh, young uh, children to our masses. And welcome to all of you, those who are online as well. Uh, Brother Thaddeus is going to give a reflection after communion. So that will be the, the main uh, commentary on today's feast and the gospel, or the readings, I should say. But I just want to say that uh, this is just proof that the Lord, that God takes us, receives us where we are in our lives. Even when we are doing not good things, when we are sinners, when we don't deserve God's love. And he always, with great love and patience, brings us further along in our lives. He molds us and shapes us into being somebody better. And so Matthew was a tax collector, somebody who probably cheated others, who was making money, was a sinner in some ways, uh, but that didn't matter to Jesus. Jesus saw in him the potential to bring him further, and eventually Matthew became an apostle, and eventually he wrote this beautiful gospel, and eventually, according to tradition, he died. He gave his life for Jesus, so he came a long way in his life, and so we should have that hope that we too and come a long way in our own lives. God will always take us where we are and bring us further. So let us stand and offer our prayers as we continue our Mass. Again, Lord, we thank you for calling each one of us, in spite of our unworthiness, in spite of our failures and mistakes in our lives, you continue to love us, forgive us, and through your uh, mercy, through your grace, you make us into better people. We pray in thanksgiving to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, help us not to judge others by things that they do, 
that we, like you, would love and forgive and accept others as they are, certainly to try and help them to become better, but to mostly to love and forgive others. We pray to the Lord. We pray for this kind of understanding and acceptance and tolerance throughout our society, that there would be an end to racism and prejudice, an end to conflicts, and an end to judgment, and all those things that uh, affect our society and cause conflicts and, and tensions and even violence in our world. May God's spirit of peace descend upon our world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our children who are here present and all of our children, wherever they may be, uh, children, grandchildren, young people in the world, that they might continue to trust that God loves them in spite of their mistakes and help them to grow and to be uh, beautiful, loving, and good people that will make a difference in this world. We pray to the Lord. And our Mass this morning is offered in a special way for the intention of Freddie Die D.Y. Uh, so we lift Freddie up to the Lord and all of his needs. We pray to the Lord. And in a few moments of silence, let us offer to God our personal intentions. For all these needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, we praise and thank you for the wonders you worked in Matthew's life and for the wonders you work in our own lives. We make all of our prayers through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue our Mass. And I invite you to sing number 376 in your books, The Servant Song, 376, 376. What do you want of me, Lord? Where do you want me to serve you? Where can I sing your praises? I am your song, Jesus, Jesus, you are the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, you Sing that refrain again. Jesus, Jesus, you are the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice and that we ourselves might be acceptable to our loving and almighty God. As we celebrate anew the memory of St. Matthew, we bring you sacrifices and prayers, O Lord, humbly imploring you to look kindly on your church whose faith you have nourished by the preaching of the apostles through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. 
Therefore, now and for ages unending with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, especially Saint Matthew, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We stand once again and we pray in the words that Jesus our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Now let us carefully offer to each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, <clears throat> have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And we'll say together once again the act of spiritual communion for those who cannot receive sacramental communion today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present. In the most holy sacrament, I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Sharing in that saving joy, O Lord, with which St. Matthew welcomed the Savior as a guest in his home, we pray, grant that we may always be renewed by the food we receive from Christ, who came to call not the just, but sinners to salvation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I invite Brother Thaddeus forward. Well, good morning. In today's reading, we, of course, hear about the calling of St. Matthew. And one of the most elegant, most beautiful depictions I've ever seen of this scene in the gospel is from the year 1600, painted by Caravaggio, one of the great Renaissance painters. And he depicts the customs house where Matthew and some of his, his fellow ne'er-do-wells, if you will, are at table counting coins. And Jesus, on the right side of the painting, enters with St. Peter, and he points at Matthew. And Matthew, in turn, points at himself with eyes wide open, as if he were saying, Me? Really? Me, the tax collector? Yes, Matthew, the tax collector. That's the one who Jesus is calling. And what Matthew is picking up on in the reading but as illustrated so well by Caravaggio, is this relationship between mercy and justice. What Jesus tells us to do, of course, is to be merciful within this passage of the gospel. And this is contrasted to the Pharisees' response. How could you dine with sinners? That's not right. That's not just. They're sinners, especially a tax collector, who were cooperators with the Romans. These were, these were Jews that, would, that have, in some sense, betrayed their people in some way and worked with those occupying their ancestral land. So there really is a kind of conflict going on here. But what Matthew is picking up on, at least in Caravaggio's depiction, is that he doesn't feel that he deserves this mercy from Jesus, this calling from Jesus. And this is rather insightful. Because, of course, Matthew was a sinner. And this is the aspect about mercy that is so important to understand just how significant it is. There is no such thing as universal mercy. Say that again. There's no such thing as universal mercy. There's not just mercy blanketed over everything and then everything's okay. Mercy is always particular. There's always some infringement on on injustice, excuse me, There is always some kind of injustice that has been done, some sin that has been done, a wrongdoing. And then mercy is applied to that injustice, to that wrong. And it absolves the sinner, the wrongdoer. This is the relationship that mercy necessarily has with justice. If we want mercy, there must also be justice first. Now, Applying mercy to our lives is a rather tricky business. Because, of course, in the abstract, in the universal, that which is not yet 
particular, you know? That sort of thing is easy to talk about. Oh, well, if somebody does something bad, we should be merciful to them and, uh, you know, bring them back to God. This all sounds wonderful. This is exactly what Jesus is telling us to do. But suddenly, this becomes really hard to do when the injustice, when the sin affects us, it affects our loves, loved ones, our friends and family, our country. These sorts of injustices are much harder to deal with. Why? Well, because we have a personal stake in them. It's very hard, or at least much harder, to say you should be merciful to that one particular person who was bullying you a minute ago, or who stole from you, or whatever else, than it is to say, oh, you should be merciful to that guy over there who stole from a store 10 years ago and I have no connection to. That's a much easier thing to deal with than when it's personal. Now, the judgment is merciless to one who has not shown mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So, when we think about how we interact with one another, when a wrongdoing has been done, when mercy is an option, then there is actually a great consequence going on here. That is, the rod with which you measure shall be measured against you. If you are not merciful to others, why do you expect mercy to be given to you? Be merciful to others, and mercy shall be given in turn to you. But if you are, if you're looking for retribution in all things, and really when we talk about this kind of re retribution, to be honest, we're not really talking about justice. We're more of talking about using justice as a pretense for revenge. That is not the way that Jesus tells us to behave now. When I say this, it is important to acknowledge that justice is virtuous, that justice is a good thing. In order for us to have the full image of the human person, we of course must be fervent believers in the importance of justice. And so, while it is true that we cannot just give up all wariness towards those who have done wrong and present a danger to us. Well, it is true that sometimes when somebody does some sort of wrongdoing, they do need to face some kind of temporal punishment to be brought back into communion with us. Still, we must find a way to integrate mercy into this such that when they do, these sinners, these wrongdoers, come, we do not become a stumbling block to them. Because, who knows, but God, perhaps that sinner who is seeking mercy, that you have the opportunity to show mercy to, could be another St. Matthew. Thank you, Brother Thaddeus. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace and be merciful to others. Thanks be to God.